All right, as we start this video, I want to ask you to spot the imposter. One of the clocks you see is not a West Clocks product. Which one is it? Look closely. Which of these clocks was not made by Western Clock Manufacturing Company of LaSalle, Illinois? This one's a trick, because that's one that I've made the dial for. The uh, fourth arbor on a big bend movement is conveniently located, where it'd be very easy to, with a suitable dial, have a clock with a seconds bit. This one doesn't count, it's a Gilbert. What's this? That doesn't say West Clocks anywhere on it, does it? Looks awfully suspicious, though. Silent, alarm, repeat, and steady. Hmm. like somebody's been making some copies, huh? And that's where I need your help. I have no idea what time period this clock was made. I have some dates for the existence of the F Mouth Company of Germany. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head. You'll have to refer to uh, wkinsler.com slash clocks. Um look at the pictures I took when I uh, um, took this clock apart and serviced it um, but I'd be very curious to know the time period in which this clock was made so if you're um, at all familiar with um, clocks made by the moth company and can shed some light on the subject I would uh, be very happy if you chimed in and told me when it was manufactured but yes, that is a Big Ben imposter. And as you can see, with it sitting side by side with a Big Ben, it's a uh, remarkably close copy. Of course, one of the dead giveaways is when you flip it around and look at the back. Oh no, it's not quite a dead giveaway, is it? They even copied the winding keys. How about that? 
One thing they did not copy, though, is the way the case is constructed. If you take this uh, bell off, the movement is exposed directly. The, um, the three screws that hold the bell on just uh, hold the bell to a, uh, a bracket that is um, screwed to the back plate of the movement. Whereas on the genuine article, the bell is just that, a bell. There's actually um, an actual... Um, rear um, case that's behind the bell so definitely not a dust proof um, case like a um, a West Clock's Big Ben is but it's still a remarkable copy of one and it's a really a good running clock let me wind it up a little bit here so you can see it run I actually don't run this clock very often, despite having taken it apart and cleaned and oiled it. It's construct the movement is constructed like a typical German movement. In fact, it's constructed so that the um, second hand can be mounted in its own bit, kind of like the actual um, big bed movement is constructed. But to give it a um, a sweep seconds hand it has a uh, set of idler gears between the um, front plate and dial to transfer the motion to a um, a tube that rides uh, on its own bearing uh, stationary bearing around the hour hand uh, so rather rather interesting there Like I said, that's my own creation. That's the um, the dial scanned off of my uh, 1921 Big Ben and edited. Made a little seconds bit there. I think it's pretty neat. Didn't take uh, any effort to do. This was this clock was pieced together out of parts. If we start it up and run it. The spring's a little stiffer than the German spring. We stay it, steady it with one hand. There it goes. Okay, I have some other interesting ones. Of course, I like the um, luminous style versions. Here's my uh, luminous style Big Ben Deluxe. Um, from what I understand from reading clockhistory.com and some of the other published info is these um, base models, the Style 2s, were uh, introduced in um, either 1926 or 1927 as nickel-plated models only. And the first ones said did not say Deluxe on them, they just said Big Ben. And when the um, paint versions were introduced the following year is when they started putting Big Ben Deluxe on all of them. And the dials were marked Big Ben Deluxe until about 1930. And then the final two or three years of the Style pr uh, 2 production were simply um, Big Ben. And so I have another... Um, 
you know, the early style, um, style two big bends. It does not say deluxe on the dial. And I think the movement is stamped either 1926 or 1927. It's been a while since I've had this one apart. And as you can see, it's missing some hardware. Of course, if you've seen um, what the um, later uh, Style 2 Big Bends look like after 1930, they're even a little bit more um, deluxe than these are. The uh, non-luminous models have the um, uh, gold-filled numerals. I'll do another video to show some of the painted Big Bend clocks. This video is just sort of a strictly uh, all-nickel models. Even though technically these are painted too, they have, um, well this one's got black paint. Sometimes they've got gold paint on the um, bottom sides of the bases. This one's black paint too. Haha, <laughs> looky there, there's one that's gold. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Ah, oh, the Ben Hur, one of my favorite. Just such a very, what I think of as as a classical, as in Greek or Roman looking clock. The um, profile of the molding on the base. Of course, I have another Ben Hur with the uh, non-luminous style in a um, in a painted case that I'll show in another video. Uh, this is the luminous style version, and it uses the um, it's basically a sleep meter with a base. And speaking of sleep meters, um, despite having so many of the um, of the Big Bends, perhaps my favorite leg models produced by West Clocks are the um, the sleep meter and the um, companion luminous style, the Jack O' Lantern. That's just neat that they came up with a whole different name for the luminous style version of the same clock. These are just, they're nice little clocks. The way they're designed, they're so um, clean. And of course, these are slightly different year manufacture of each other by the fact that the um, rear foot arrangement is a little different. As you can see, this one's obviously newer. It has the little extension on the X. And this one doesn't. So this one was made before 1926 or 1927. And here's an earlier sleep meter. This uses a movement that's quite a bit larger than the um, America slash sleep meter movement that the um, the other clocks use. And uh, I've had this clock apart. The time runs. The alarm does not work. The um, click is actually a flat piece of uh, spring brass. And it's one piece of brass that serves as the click for both the time and the alarm. And... Um, some point I'm going to have to get around to making a new one out of some flat spring brass stock. But for now, just the time works. And um, I forget what the date stamp on this one is. I want to say it's um, World War One era. I don't remember. And like the Big Bends, it has a... Um, a cam on the um, on the third arbor that operates a lever that produces the um, intermittent operation that the uh, big bends have. But unlike the big bends, the um, intermittent cannot be defeated on this clock. Here it says intermittent right there on the dial. 
And these came with a couple different designs of bows. You see it's a, um, a flat stamp piece of steel, nickel plated of course, for a bow instead of just the uh, wire bows that the, all the other clocks have. And then there's the diminutive baby Ben, and um, do not let the dial fool you. You see the extension on the X, but if we turn it around, what's this? The alarm and time wind in opposite directions. It's because this little clock was the uh, uh, first baby Ben I ever bought. The Tulsa flea market in the early 90s had um, no hour, no minute hand, no alarm hand, just an hour hand, no glass, and the dial was a very dark shade of brown, so dark that um, you could not see the numbers. So I uh, eventually bought a, um, a parts baby bin with a nice dial and hands, and... Um, put the dial on there. Eventually I'll have to find the correct dial for it or find a reproduction dial but for now other than the little X uh, it's not too bad looking. I, what I say this was? 1922 I think is the date stamp on this one and not a bad little clock. It's neat to compare these side by side just how diminutive the baby bins are next to the big bins and the way the movements are made are is interesting also like a large pin pilot pocket watch movement really and of course my favorite base model has to be this almost pristine style 2 big bin deluxe with the luminous dial. This is a very, very nice running clock. Although I suspect that um, the um, legends for the um, the levers have been replaced. And um, at this point, I'd like to echo. Here's here's some original legends on the 1921. The style of the writing changed a little bit with time. Here's another one. As you can see, this one's pre-26 or 27. Those might be original. These are definitely original, and you're still quite legible, though. And of course, this one being just a parts clock, it was not in great shape. You can just barely make these out. I've seen a few other YouTube videos, and I've seen a lot of eBay sellers generally clueless descriptions of the um, items that they are trying to hawk, and um, I've seen some pretty colorful descriptions of what these levers do because the um, writing is so um, illegible on most of them that they don't have a clue as to... Um, as to what they do but um, so this one here on the uh, right side of the clock is pretty obvious what's going on here this is how you turn the alarm on and off this is the silent position that's the alarm position okay nothing mysterious there the other side here um, is marked steady and repeat and the um, repeat alarms were really kind of a popular fad in alarm clocks in the um, oh, I want to say the 1890s to the 1920s and um, basically what it is is the alarm will ring for probably 15 or 20 seconds and there will be about 20 to 30 seconds of silence and then it will ring 15 to 20 seconds again and and so on and so on and so on until you shut it off and as I mentioned before, it does this via a, um, a cam on one of the um, 
arbors inside, and in the case of the Big Ben clocks, it's the um, the third arbor. The fourth arbor is located here and rotates, makes one revolution every uh, minute. The um, third arbor, uh, I think, makes one revolution every seven and a half minutes. And there are I'm trying to think here. I've never actually counted it, but it looks like there's nine or eleven um, lifting lobes on that cam so for one revolution of that wheel it will raise and lower the repeat lever and each time the repeat lever is raised the alarm is allowed to operate and when the repeat lever falls into one of the valleys on the cam the alarm stops so that should give you kind of a good idea of, of how the repeat works. Um, I guess another video is an order where I have a movement out of one of these cases um, running so you can see what's going on. I've got several parts movements in uh, some of my cabinets that I keep the parts in. But not very many of them are complete. Of all these clocks, I've probably used the America the longest. This America here dates to about, I think, 1920. Is the stamp on it. Um, it's just a really nice, easy-to-use clock. Very simple controls on the back. It's not a dustproof case. But it's just got that timeless, simple styling. The bell top alarm clock. And as you can see, as is common on these clocks with their thin brass cases, um, one of the feet was missing, so it's been replaced with a um, small nickel plated screw and pair of nuts. If I'm going to lathe, I don't know why I don't just make another foot for it, but as a priority as you know. So that's a, that's a clock I've used quite a bit. I like using the luminous clocks too. They're generally nice also. So there you have it. That's my uh, collection of nickel alarm clocks by uh, West Clocks. And uh, like I said, the one imposter there. And then the one I've modified. I don't know why West Clocks didn't uh, make more clocks with seconds hands. Um, if you go and look at some of the websites on clocks, you'll see you'll see some. Um, clocks that were made uh, in special um, runs for um, various this this isn't that so there's um, one I believe it's the um, Tom Thumb which is a little time only um, clock that um, the uh, common versions do not have a, um, a seconds hand it's just a minute and hour hand um, but there was several made uh, in nickel finish with a seconds hands for um, the US Medical Association so they were willing to um, to on special occasions make make clocks such as this and it's very possible that somewhere out there is a um, group of big bends that were made for some special purpose with a um, seconds hand like I said the fourth wheel is located in a favorable spot where a uh, seconds hand could be um, installed and it makes a great idea and I, I like clocks with seconds hands those are, those can be pretty useful um, I have the feeling I have a video I'm going to be making here soon that demonstrates um, a useful application of the seconds hand and then there's the moth like I said, if you have any information 
what time period these were made, I'd really be happy to know. Um, it's just amazing how much they copied it. Even the, even the numbers. Even the numbers are copied more or less. There's a little bit of little bit of individuality in the style, and of course, um, you see the twelve isn't obscured by the alarm bit like it is on the uh, West Clark's product. But I would I would still like to know what time period these were um, these were produced. So if if you know anything and can share. Um, please drop me a line. I'd like I'd like to know. So this is uh, Wes here at Oklahoma Bridges, and uh, check out the website. Like I said, this YouTube channel is a companion to the uh, wkinsler.com website, and the uh, channel name is named after probably the largest portion of the uh, wkinsler.com website, the uh, Oklahoma Bridges. So, take a look at us. Thank you.